Cool. So, uh, thank you, Nick, for uh, introducing me. Hello, everyone, and thank you uh, for joining me in this, uh, in, uh, in this presentation. We will go straight to the point, and the point is uh, we have um, our Bolt uh, Enterprise endpoint ready, um, deployed and uh, ready for production, and we started uh, thinking, uh, well, we need to adopt it. We need to integrate it with uh, other tools that we use inside our organization. So the first uh, thing that we uh, came up with was uh, how can we consume both secrets from uh, our Jenkins pipelines? I mean, uh, from our, our CI, CD pipelines, we need to uh, go to Vault uh, and uh, uh, fetch or write secrets depending on, uh, on your permission. That was our feeling uh, at the beginning of uh, starting the, the Vault uh, experience. And um, before, before dealing into details, so let me just set the scenario. And the scenario uh, uh, is still that uh, we have to integrate Vault in, uh, uh, with, uh, with Jenkins where pipelines run both on premise and on cloud. And we cannot use uh, always uh, uh, authentication methods like the AWS or the Kubernetes one that are very useful to uh, for a kind of out of the box uh, um, authentication and support uh, uh, with, uh, with Vault. So uh, with, that, uh, with this in mind, uh, uh, we uh, started uh, uh, studying Vault and uh, we came up with uh, the uh, Vault uh, uproll up authentication method. For those of uh, you that don't know what an uproll uh, authentication method is, let me just uh, uh, state the, um, what the Vault uh, official documentation uh, uh, states. And the uproll authentication methods uh, allow machines, uh, allows machines and or applications to authenticate with Vault and to authenticate, to authenticate with Vault uh, with uh, um, credentials that are kind of username and passwords uh, that in the Vault lingo are named uh, respectively ro uh, role ID and secret ID. Once you have your uh, role ID and secret ID, you can uh, use them for logging to Vault, retrieve a token, and uh, interact with Vault uh, with the permissions uh, uh, associated to, to your token. So the, the, the typical workflow uh, in uh, integrating uh, Jenkins with Vault through uh, an uproll authentication method is more or less what I uh, uh, what is um, pictured in the, in the slide. So you have a Vault or a namespace admin that in some cases name and also delegated admins because a Vault enterprise has this concept of uh, segregating different contexts uh, through namespaces. So uh, the Vault admin or the namespace admin creates uh, policy and roles uh, for, for the pipelines. So instruments, uh, the, the, the Vault uh, for, for the Jenkins pipeline, it gets the, uh, the, the role ID and the secret D and the, it uh, pass those both, uh, those two credentials to the Jenkins pipeline. Once the pipeline has those credentials, it, as I mentioned before, uh, it, it will, uh, it will uh, log in into Vault. The, if the login succeeds, the Vault returns uh, a token, and with this token, uh, the, the Jenkins pipeline can, uh, can then uh, interface uh, with Vault uh, with the permissions uh, associated to, to that token. Uh, once we had this in place, we, uh, we thought, uh, okay, uh, so uh, now um, problem uh, integration uh, between uh, Jenkins and Vault solved. But immediately after uh, we realized that uh, we were uh, starting sharing uh, sensitive uh, uh, data, that is the, uh, especially the secret ID credential. Um, and uh, at the same time, we were moving from uh, uh, the uh, sprawling uh, secrets uh, um, environment that uh, uh, Vault solves uh, uh, by centralizing uh, um, by centralizing uh, the secret management. So we 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 thought it was uh, not the uh, proper approach. And um, at this point, we started uh, uh, figuring out what was the the uh, the 
best uh, approach to deal with uh, this challenge. And we, we, we had a kind of uh, workshop with, uh, with you, uh, with, with, with our Ashikov Enterprise um, architects. So we view uh, Ashikov guys. Uh, and uh, during the, uh, the workshop, uh, among all the other questions, we asked a very simple question. How can we securely deliver our uproll secret ID from Vault to our pipelines? And the answer was, uh, this is a secret zero challenge, meaning that uh, you have to provide for the first time uh, sensitive information like a, a, a password to some entity. I am uh, uh, Giuseppe Misurelli. I'm a, a senior DevOps engineer at UX Data Porter Group. And I'd like uh, uh, sharing with you the, this uh, experience that uh, we, are having, we are having together with Ashicorp in uh, making uh, the Secret Zero Challenge uh, uh, a piece of cake or a kind of piece of cake. So, um, Secret Zero Challenge, facing it, uh, it means uh, basically uh, trying to deliver uh, uh, sensitive information in a secure way. There is a, there is a very, very interesting feature in Vault there is um, the Vault response wrapping that we are leveraging uh, simply to deliver a rapid secret ID uh, token instead of the real token, uh, in, sorry, instead of the real secret ID. Why we, uh, we think uh, that Vault response wrapping is, uh, um, is the solution for our secret zero challenge? Because, uh, uh, it, because uh, with Vault response wrapping, we can harder the secret ID. Uh, in fact, the, 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 what we transmit from, uh, from, uh, from Vault to, 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 to the Jenkins pipeline is not the real secret ID, but it's, uh, it's rather a reference to it. Uh, the unwrap of this uh, wrapping token is a, a one-time action, and this way we can uh, uh, indirectly um, check if the proper uh, pipeline uh, uh, wrap the secret, uh, wrap the, 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 the token, uh, unwrap the token or, or not. And uh, last but not least, uh, the exposure of uh, the response wrapping that is itself, a, that is itself a, a, a token, a wrapper token uh, actually, the exposure of this token into the wire is really limited because uh, you can set very, very short uh, lifetime for this token. And uh, again, once you, once you get this token and you unwrap it, uh, it no, no one else can, uh, can uh, unwrap uh, it again. This was the solution. Uh, uh, this, uh, the, the, we started the studying the uh, response wrapping feature and we, we came up with uh, more or less this uh, new uh, uh, reviewed workflow for interacting uh, 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 from a Jenkins pipeline with, uh, with Vault. As you can see in, uh, in this picture, uh, the, there are a, a couple of uh, extra steps uh, to do in, ter in terms of uh, configurations and uh, commands uh, to, to issue. But to make, uh, to make all the story really, really simple, uh, the, main, uh, the main steps to, to perform uh, to implement the response wrapping is uh, the first one, the vault uh, has to provide to Jenkins a token with the permission to only write, this is very, very uh, crucial, this is key here. Uh, the permissions is, uh, uh, should be really limited to only write a rapid secret ID. We will see, we will see in the next slides uh, what, that, what it means uh, in terms of uh, uh, vault client. Um, once the, the rapid secret ID has been created uh, and passed to uh, and passed to the, the token has been created and passed to the Jenkins pipeline, the, sorry to the Jenkins node, the Jenkins uh, um, um, writes a rapid secret ID exposing it to the pipeline. Uh, so it's the it's the Jenkins can, can uh, that can uh, can write the, uh, this uh, this wrapping uh, uh, token. And, um, and uh, the last uh, step is uh, on, uh, on the pipeline that uh, simply has to unwrap the, the secret ID. Once the secret ID is unwrapped, it, uh, it has 
uh, actually the, the secret ID. With this secret ID, uh, together with the role ID, uh, the pipeline can now log in into to, into both and uh, do again whatever uh, it is allowed to do by the policy and the roles associated to, to that pipeline. Cool. So um, some kind of uh, uh, highlights on uh, on the configuration that uh, uh, we we uh, we have to to do to to implement this uh, this workflow. Uh, let's. Uh, Let's uh, concentrate on the on the Vault admin or the namespace admin uh, steps. The first step for the for the Vault admin is to um, create the policy for the pipeline uh, for sorry for for the Jenkins node to uh, to give uh, to give the to the Jenkins node the possibility to create a, a wrapping a wrapping token. And uh, there are there are uh, at least a couple of uh, um, uh, ways to do that. Um, we we thought that the setting uh, setting the uh, the range for the wrapping TTL uh, would be uh, the the, the uh, best solution for us. We will see how uh, this uh, this uh, two uh, configurations um, can be can be exp leveraged by by the Vault Write command. So here uh, is just a matter of uh, defining defining a, a policy. Uh, and uh, for the pipelines, because uh, the pipeline the pipeline will have a, an app role associ associated with it to authenticate the vault. For the pipeline, we need to write uh, uh, the, the the actual uh, app role, and that is in this case it's uh, it's the uh, pipeline app role. And here you can play with different uh, with lots of uh, uh, configuration uh, that can uh, can uh, um, fit your. Uh, your requirements. In this case, for this example, uh, uh, we have set uh, a secret ID uh, can be used only once, and the secret ID TTL, the time to live is uh, 300 sec uh, seconds, and uh, the token associated to that, uh, to that uh, authentication uh, has a, uh, um, a TTL of uh, half an hour. Um, for what concern the policy that the pipeline uh, will have in uh, in this uh, in this uh, scenario, we are uh, simply uh, defining uh, uh, a policy on a key value uh, secret engine named uh, we, in the path key KV uh, pipeline secrets, and uh, and the the only capabilities that we have it's uh, it's a, a a red one. So. Um, once we had uh, everything in place uh, in Vault, uh, we have to go to the Jenkins node hosting the pipelines, and the Jenkins uh, node uh, should uh, sh must uh, write a rapid secret ID to pass to the to the Jenkins pipeline. Here, uh, the the um, the trick is very uh, simple. I, I mean, you you only have to uh, issue a vault write or just refer to the uh, vault API with uh, curl or whatever whatever SDK you you use. Um, but here, for the example, uh, uh, the, the 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 it's key to use the uh, dash wrap dash TTL uh, option. Otherwise, guess what what will happen. Uh, and we will try to see it in uh, in action uh, in uh, in the demo. Otherwise, uh, uh, the uh, vault will uh, will uh, will answer to to Jenkins' uh, permission deny because uh, uh, if you remember here the uh, the policy was uh, was uh, set to uh, specify uh, uh, the um, a range for the wrap TTL and that range should uh, should last in the defined uh, range. So that's uh, that's all for the Jenkins side, uh, and uh, finally we will move in the in the, the pipeline uh, context. Uh, once the pipeline will receive the rapid uh, uh, secret ID, it, it has only to to unwrap the the the, the this rapid token. The 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 Volt unwrap is a one-time action, as I mentioned before. It's just a Volt unwrap. The token that uh, the Jenkins uh, node uh, provided to the pipeline, and uh, the output is uh, the secret ID. Uh, this is a fake secret ID, uh, and in any case, it's uh, it's um, it, its lifetime is uh, is gone. So don't use it because you 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 won't be able to do anything with it. 
uh, once you have your secret ID, you can get your role ID and uh, your, your game is almost over. I mean, you, you only have to, to log in. Uh, we, we both log in uh, uh, common and, uh, and, uh, and you receive a, a token and you are good to go. So, um, to make things uh, a little bit more, uh, um, a little bit more secure, uh, I, I, I'd like to uh, point some uh, consideration here, at least three, three topics that should really uh, be taken into account while uh, uh, using, uh, uh, while adopting this, uh, this solution and using the, the uh, bolt response wrapping feature in, uh, in, uh, especially in production. And the first one is related to the secret uh, uh, IDs delivery. I, um, I can uh, expect that uh, uh, many, many uh, Jenkins node can run different pipelines for different applications, access, accessing uh, uh, consequently uh, different secrets. So you, you, you need to think on how to segregate uh, um, the, 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 the access to these tokens uh, uh, in, uh, in the different pipelines. Uh, so it, it is crucial that Jenkins uh, uh, wraps the proper secret path to pass to the proper pipeline. But in the, in, in the case someone gets your, your um, gets a, 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 wrapping, a rapid uh, secret ID that is, uh, that is uh, aimed for another pipeline, what you can do, uh, you can alert on misuse in this case. So uh, since, the wrap, since the unwrap uh, uh, action is a just one time action, what we can, uh, what we can set is a, an alert on, uh, on, the, on, on, any, on any failure on, uh, on, uh, on uh, getting the unwrap from the proper pipeline. So if a, a, a proper pipeline tries to uh, unwrap uh, is its own uh, rapid secret ID and this operation fails, you can raise an alert because uh, um, it's most probably that uh, something else unwrapped uh, that token uh, uh, on, your, on your behalf. And uh, the last uh, point is about uh, trusted entity. Um, implementing wrapping response secret, uh, especially uh, with, uh, with uh, something that uh, uh, has a, a token to do something. In this case, uh, in our case, it's Jenkins, but it could be uh, a shared server, uh, a Terraform control machine, a Terraform enterprise server, whatever, whatever entity that uh, has to be equipped with, uh, with some uh, bold credentials, it can be considered as a trusted entity. Uh, this un trusted entity uh, should, be, uh, should be secured and treated uh, as a, a critical system. This is, uh, this is uh, uh, key for, uh, for moving forward uh, a more secure implementation of your uh, secrets consuming from, uh, from Jenkins uh, pipelines uh, uh, um, interfacing with Bolt. That's uh, more or less uh, uh, um, all what I, uh, what I want to, to say to you. I'm uh, switching to, to a, little, uh, a little demo, hoping that it, uh, it will uh, work. So uh, as a first point, we, um, what we have to do, we have to uh, instrument the uh, vault, uh, uh, the vault um, uh, endpoint, and in this case, the vault namespace, uh, to uh, define uh, uh, up roles, permissions, uh, and in this case, this is only for 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 um, for this demo. In in this case, we are also we are also uh, creating some secrets, but it's just for for uh, the demo. Uh, the result of the demo should be uh, output those uh, those both, this two uh, secrets. So we will have this, uh, this, um, this uh, Terraform code that uh, creates uh, the policy for uh, the pipeline, uh, creates the policy for the trusted entity with the wrapping TTL, uh, enable the backend, uh, uh, the, the authentication method backend, uh, that is uh, the hub role, and uh, and uh, creates the, the 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 role for the for the hub role. Let's try to let's try to plan this. Uh, 
code here. And we have six uh, things, six resources uh, that should be added. So we are good to go and we can say auto approve to create all the resources here. Okay, we have uh, oh, uh, everything in place now and we will move to the uh, Jenkins pipeline. So the Jenkins pipeline, it's just a, a collection of uh, uh, stages where we create the rapid secret ID, we get the role ID, we unwrap the secret ID, we get uh, the login token to login into Bolt, we login into Bolt, and uh, the last stage is fetch my K KV secrets. We go to our, we have, we have the, the Jenkins uh, file in, uh, in our repository, and we can go to Jenkins, build now. And uh, as you can see, everything has been, uh, has been uh, uh, built. And in this case, the last point is uh, fetching, uh, fetching uh, the secrets. So we are good to go to consume our, our secrets uh, uh, from, uh, from uh, our pipeline. There is uh, something that I want to add you to prove that uh, if, uh, if the Jenkins uh, doesn't uh, use uh, the, uh, the uh, wrap uh, option in the vault write, it will fail, uh, uh, it will get a permission denied. So let's uh, change a bit here the, the, the Jenkins file and uh, we will uh, remove those option we will ignore the wrap ttl option we, we push on uh, ashitol uh, we can go back to the back to the pipeline. I once set a uh, web book and uh, guess what happened here? Ha ha ha! Permission denied. There is the expected uh, uh, behavior. With this in mind, I think I'm uh, 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 at the end of my presentation. So actually I'm at the end of the presentation. So I'd like again to thank you, uh, everyone who joined uh, uh, this, uh, this presentation. Uh, special thanks to uh, our, our Ashicorp uh, Enterprise Architect for all the support and the, and the good suggestions uh, that uh, they uh, give us. And uh, that's, uh, that's all for me. Hey, Giuseppe, thank you so much. That was, that was awesome. That was awesome, dude. And I, I give anybody massive props who, can, who will do a live demo. I genuinely love, uh, love a live demo there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nick. Maybe we, we, we will see, we will see, we will meet in a, in a, in a ride. <laughs> hey, you know what? I've, so we've been having this conversation internally. When I say internally, what I mean is Tom, Tom builds stuff and I have been having this conversation. He says that there's an amphitheater in Sicily and we were like, we should do hashi days in that amphitheater in Sicily and we can hang out in Italy and eat great food and like just enjoy good life as well as having the talks and the open air I think that would be dope I genuinely wish I had the power to make that happen but I'd love to see you out on a ride if I'm ever in Italy 
you 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 will be uh, more than welcome. So I ask you a couple of questions. Yes, how are you like? I think honest. Be honest with us. How are you finding kind of the implementation of Alt? It, it's not. I know it's not. It has, there's, there's a certain learning curve, I think. But one, I feel that once you get over the learning curve, you know, it, it everything feels very natural. There are some very simple patterns. How's yeah. how's your experience been? So um, there is a, a, a Latin word, uh, a Latin way to say there is a forma mentis, and you really have to uh, change your mentality in uh, when you deal with Volt, because uh, Volt uh, uh, brings you this new way of uh, dealing with secrets, and uh, sometimes uh, sometimes you think, uh, well, I'm uh, I'm. Uh, I'm sharing something uh, that I'm not supposed to, to share and I'm doing something. Why should I have to log in uh, to get role IDs, uh, secret IDs, uh, log in, uh, uh, um, get a token and uh, get back to, to Bolt? Um, at a first glance, it seems uh, crazy. But uh, when you start uh, being uh, more uh, um, accustomed to it, and you start um, and you start thinking that uh, the, you you will uh, always have a, um, a an API to do something, you re realize that uh, wow, it's really great dealing with uh, uh, Vault. Yeah, and I I kind of see you know I think anything involving security is is. It's, it's not easy. You've got to take a certain amount of care and attention. And we're having a bit of a, a theme going on with Gareth coming up next. But um, yeah, I, I think that's, that's a fair comment. I think that's pretty, uh, pretty true. I think it's one of those things like then when you use it, the versatility is really, really killer, right? Yeah, absolutely. 